go ahead and stand up. And we're going to do the 10 second shakedown. So we're gonna start with the right hand, then the left hand, then the right foot, then the left foot. And we're gonna count from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 9, 8, 7, 6, and so on and so forth. And what this does is it just raises our energy, just like a cup of coffee. It fuels us, it empowers us, and we also take that opportunity just to shake out everything that doesn't serve us. All unwanted influences, any thoughts, feelings, sensations, we just let it all go. So go ahead, get rooted through your feet, and let's start with the right hand. Oh, and it only works if you say it out loud with me, otherwise it's useless. So let's start with the right hand. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 2, 1. 2, 1. 2, 1. 2, 1. 1, 1, 1, 1. Woo! Happy Easter. Okay. So that's what it kind of feels like to be a yoga teacher talking throughout the entire practice. Very invigorating. So I'm going to come to the top of our mat. Standing in Tadasana. Okay. Allow your big toes to kind of point in a little bit more than you think that they should. So the outside perimeter of your feet are in alignment with your mat. Spiral your palms forward. Take time to roll the shoulders forward up, back and down. As we reclaim a calm, soothing, steady breath. We dig down into the earth, the soles of the feet. Visualize that they're growing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet underneath you, spreading out. Begin to breathe in and out through the nostrils. And on the next inhalation, drop that early sensation through the roots of your feet and pull them into the ankles, into the shins. Draw the kneecaps up towards the sky, really engaging through the quadricep muscles. Squeeze your tush and let it go, but feel the tailbone root into the floor. As you take your pubic bone closer towards your navel, and then the navel draws up through the length of your spinal column all the way up through the crown of the head. Fingers, you can visualize that you're a spider woman and you're shooting legs into the earth as well. And then we come back to the breath as we exhale, contract the navel towards the spine, and gently push all the breath up and out. Inhaling, nourishing that lower belly as it expands and fills into the ribcage, heart all the way up to the shoulders. And then as we exhale, the breath will leave the shoulders, the heart, the ribcage contracts, and the navel presses towards the spine. Just continue this ebb and flow, riding the inhalation and the exhalation in this three-part abdominal breath. Just seeing where it takes you today. As you scan your physical body from your head to your toes, can you tune in and see if there's any areas that are whispering or screaming out? As we make sure to honor those areas today by modifying. In deep gratitude, the palms come together into a prayer as the thumbs really palpate into the heart center. Reflecting on at least three things that we're grateful for this morning. And bowing our foreheads down to our heart as we take time to set our intention for our journey. Allow this intention to be in service of your higher being as well as all others in this universe. And then inhale, open up your eyes, still containing the intention between your palms, sweep the fingertips up towards the sky, release your intention out into the universe as we swung back forward. 
Good. Hands either onto the floor or onto the shins. Inhale, lift up halfway, neutralize through the neck. Exhale, pour more of your body weight into the balls of the feet. Again, inhale, directing the heart forward, tucking the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, forward fold. Two more times. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. One more time. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Feel free to bend the knees now and feel the sits bones rising higher towards the sky, really activating through the backs of the legs, allow the head to hang heavy. And now the thumbs plug into the hip flexors, squeeze the elbows up towards the star. And then inhale, sweep your heart forward and skyward. Exhale, straight down all the legs. Inhale, we extend the arms out and up. Exhale, pray it down or swan dive forward. Inhale, floating the right foot back, right knee onto the earth. Sweeping your heart, your head, your hands all the way up with a little bit of a back bend. And then exhale, we'll step back into the down dog and pause here. Feet are hip width apart. Maybe you pedal through one knee at a time or spiral up onto the balls of the feet and create figure eights, doing whatever you need to do. Just starting to get into our bodies. And then from here, we'll inhale, flow into a plank position, bubbling out through the back of the heart. And now we'll hook the front of the heart up towards the sky for a funky up dog. What makes it funky is that the toes are tucked under. As we push our heels back and activate through our quadriceps, bend the knees, melt into a bear pose, and back into a down dog. So before we step our right foot forward, try not to lift the right leg because it's all in one breath in eventually that we step the right foot in between our hands, lower down onto the left knee, and reach our heart, our head, our hands all the way up. As we exhale, frame the right foot, one giant step forward with that left foot. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Flat back, extend the arms out to the side, sweep them all the way up towards the side, palms connect and the thumbs, travel down the center of your vessel. Same thing, a little bit quicker, following the sound of our breath. Inhale, exhale, pray it down or swan dive forward. Left leg floats back, left knee kisses the mat, and we continue to inhale at the top of the inflammation we back bend. Exhale, step back to a down dog. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Bubble the heart, back of the heart up, front of the heart up as we inhale. Slide the shoulders down the back. Exhale, their pose, down dog. Left foot steps in between the hands, right knees on the floor. Inhale, reaching your heart, your head, your hands all the way up. Exhale, frame that left foot. Make right knee up, step right foot forward. Inhale, gather your energy and your strength. All the way back up. Exhale, comes travel down the center of your vessel. Same thing. Inhale, reaching your heart, your head, your hands all the way back up. Exhale, pray down and forward. Step right foot back. Maybe right knee stays elevated up off the earth this time. And maybe not. It's your choice. Exhale, step back to a down dog. Inhale, flow into your funky up dog. Keep activating through the quadriceps. Exhale, bend the knees, down dog. Right foot floats in between the hands. High lunge or low lunge. You need to keep your hands on the earth if you can. Exhale, step left foot forward. Inhale, flat back, send the arms out to the side. All the way up towards the sky. Exhale, comes travel down the center. Again, inhale, sweeping your heart, your head, your hands all the way up. Engage through those thigh muscles as you draw them back and your heart glides you forward. Inhale, left leg floats back. High lunge or low, low lunge. Reaching up and back. Exhaling, down dog. Inhale, funky up dog. Make sure you're following the sound of your breath in your own pace and not necessarily the sound of my voice. Left foot steps in between the hands. Inhale, high lunge or low lunge. Exhale, standing forward, shoulder. 
flat back, extend the arms onto the side, sweep them all the way up towards the sky, embrace your opposite elbow. From here, cascade off to the right, elbows down towards the earth, and then the elbows and the head back up towards the sky. Let's go to the left, keep the forearms onto the crown of the head. As we just start to awaken the side body, the legs, feel free to bend them at any time. Inhale. Last one, exhale, it's like a handless cartwheel. Inhale, back up. Good, extend the arms forward. Feel free to bend the knees just a little bit as we extend the crown of our head and our fingertips forward. Take the shoulders and the hips back, crown of the head and fingertips forward, and then exhale, hinge from the hip flexor, forward fold. Hands are on the earth okay, or on blocks. Let's bend the right knee, keep left leg super straight, and walk our hands off to the right. Push the left hip closer towards the left wall. Walk your hands back a little bit more so you feel the whole left side of your body open up. Breathe in, breathe out. Maybe you want to pulse that left hip forward and backward or starward and downward. And then walk the hands back underneath the shoulders. Let's lift up halfway once again, heart of Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Bend the left knee, keep the right leg straight. Walk your hands all the way up to the left. And as far back as you can. Now left knee is bent, right leg is straight. Both heels are on the earth. Maybe pulse it to the right foot, the left foot. Just doing whatever you need to do. Explore how to open yourself up. And then the hands come back down underneath the shoulders. We lift up halfway. We exhale, we step back to the plank position. Holding our plank position, wrists are directly underneath the shoulders. Feet are hip width apart, really zipper up through the front body. Scoop the thigh bones forward. Think about the knees levitating the half inch up off the earth, and then you have a vase of flowers on your back. So you don't want to move your booty. All in the core. Every time you scoop the thighs forward, draw the pubic bone closer towards the navel. Let's do seven more. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two, knees get to come all the way down, untuck your toes, shave your side body with your elbows, eight points of contact. Lower down onto the pubic bone, inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, washing your face towards the earth. Tipping out through the fingers like we have Easter eggs underneath them and we don't want to crush them. So standing on the pubic bone, the hip bones, inhale, lifting up through the heart again. Take time to roll the shoulders forward, up, back, and down. Okay, and squeeze your toes, let it go. Pour more of your body weight into the pubic bone and the toes as you elevate your hands up off the earth. Lift the heart a little bit higher. And then TP out through the fingers again, or if you prefer, flatten the palms. Now lift with a little bit of assistance through the arms. So use and squeeze your back abs as we exhale, washing the forehead down. Let's take out the fingers and take them onto your carpet or onto the wood or onto the tile, just off of the mat. Contract in between the rhomboid muscles behind the heart like you're squeezing a magic wand. Let's roll the right ear towards the right shoulder, crown the head up towards the side, to the left shoulder, and then we pause the forehead down. Inhale to the left and up, exhale to the right and down. So really push into the pinky toes, the pubic bone, just allow the head and the neck to unwind. One more time, all the way up and then down. Hands underneath the shoulders, tuck your toes, push up into a plank, bear pose, down dog. Okay, sweeping the right leg high towards the sky. Again, drop that right hip so we can expand to that left hip. How does that feel today? Elevate up onto the ball of the left foot. And as we exhale, stack the shoulders on top of the wrist and kiss your right knee. Inhale into our down dog split. We're going to stay in this A frame and then keep melting your heart towards the wall behind you and kiss the knee. Erect the right leg back up towards the sky for the standing split in the sense. And then as we exhale, launch off the ball of that left foot, kiss your right knee. Shoulders back. 
on top of wrist. Inhale, down dog split. Stay with the heart melting back. Exhale, kiss your right knee. Inhale, down dog split. Exhale, three leg plank position. Right shoulder to the uh, right knee to right shoulder to the left shoulder to the right knee. Touch it, left wrist. Right shoulder, left shoulder, right wrist, left wrist. One more little box formation that you're creating with your knee. Inhale, sweep right leg high. And then exhale, thread right leg underneath your torso. So the outside edge of your right foot is on the earth, pivot left heel towards the right. And then inhale, just open up here. Good. Extend that left arm on top of your ear. Sweep left fingertips back behind you and then in front of you. Two more full circles here, getting nice and warm, nice and humid Maui day. Left arm on top of the ear, sweep left hand underneath the shoulder, pivot onto the ball of the left foot, step right foot back into a plank position. Here we go, inhale, exhale, eight points of contact or chaturanga, inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. All right, so from here, walk your feet together. We're all going to become little bunnies with hops. So bend the knees, inhale, exhale, now breath, hop up, and just continue these little hops, right? Trying to get the hips on top of the shoulders, and then we bunny hop forward, all the way to the top of our mat. Inhale, we lift up halfway, exhale, forward fold. Feel free to bend the knees for this as we Slide the back of the right hand underneath the foot so the toes are melting into the carpals. And then we do the same thing with the left. And any of the standing to our fold, the tanasana, if your wrists are hurting, you can do this and it will alleviate the tension in the carpals. So pour more of the body weight again into the balls of the feet. Slide the elbows and the shoulders up towards the sky. The head draws closer towards the earth. It should feel really good for those wrists. And then release the hands, stepping off of the hand. Inhale, lift up halfway once again. Exhale, forward fold, flat back, extend those arms up to the side, sweep them all the way up towards the back, palms connect. Exhale, thumbs travel down the center of your muscle. Here we go. Inhale, reaching the heart and head and hands all the way back up. Exhale, swarm body forward or great down and forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. See if you can float back to Chaturanga. And then inhale, up dog. Exhale, on the two and down dog. Maybe a flubber breath out through the mouth. <laughs> Maybe you can't even do that. Okay, left leg high towards the sky. Drop the left hip. Feel the expansion from the outside perimeter of that right hip. Elevate high onto the ball of the right foot. Exhale, knee to nose, stack the shoulders on top of the ribs. Inhale, down dog split. Exhale, knee to nose, you stay in your A frame. Inhale, down dog split. Here we go, traveling forward. Bubble out to the back of the heart. Drive the navel towards the sky. Inhale, stay in your little A frame. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, sweep that left leg high. One more time, forward, kissing that knee. Inhale, up. Let's do one more time in an A frame. Exhale, keep that left hip dropping. Inhale, left leg high. Go into a three leg plank position. Left knee to left shoulder. To the right shoulder, you knee tap it. Left leg, right leg, left shoulder, right shoulder, left. Right, one more, left, right, left, right. Inhale, sweeping that left leg high. Spread that left leg underneath your torso, standing on the outside edge of the left foot. Cartwheel your right toes to the right, the left, right heel towards the left. And then inhale, just open up. Feel your heart open, expand the right arm on top of your ear, flip right palm up towards the sky, sweep your right fingertips back behind you. Inhale in front. Exhale, roll it wide open. One more time, inhale. Oh yeah, exhale. Right arm on top of the ear, right hand, 
underneath the shoulder, pivot onto ball, right foot, step left foot back. Inhale, exhale, chaturanga all the way down to the earth. Extend your arms long and forward, preparing for solid backward. So from here, draw your knees together, your ankles together. Again, we get to stand and move down through the pubic bone as our legs stand up towards the side with our heart. I kind of visualize that I am a superhero flying through the air, breathing in and breathing out. Okay, so the arm out. And with this heart, your heart just lifted. Squeeze the inner knees together and the ankles. Interlace the fingers back behind you. Draw the knuckles towards the heels. You can look up, you can look down. Stay with your breath. Straighten the legs a little bit more. Keep your heart this high. Don't let it project towards the earth. As you extend your wings out and then forward, and now we get to relax. Shake your hips from side to side. Nice deep breath in and exhale. Ah. And after long, this rest, we are in alignment with the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck your toes, plank pose, and our beloved down dog. From here, spread your feet as wide as your mat. You can go a little wider if you prefer. Make sure those heels are on the floor. Getting this perspective. Now I want you to visualize that you're crushing a can in between the shoulder blades. This is an awesome shoulder and heart opening. As the forehead moves all the way down towards the earth, you might have to narrow your stance a little bit. Stay with your breath. And then pick the forehead back up off the earth. Come down onto your hands and knees. Knees are directly together. Slay the heels out to the side. Embrace your calf muscle. Roll it away from the midline. And slither into your hero pose. If you need a block or books, you can sit on them. Or even a bolster or pillows. Just utilize what you need. And then hold on to your knees. From here, you can think like you're riding a horse or a unicorn or something. You can get creative and have a lot of fun. So we slide our elbows into our side body. We hook our heart up towards the sky. We might even create an underbite here. So roll onto the front of the pubic bone, push into the pinky toes. And as we exhale, bubble out through the back of the heart, chin into the chest. Here we go. Roll onto the front of the pubic bone, slide the elbows into the side rib cage. And then as we exhale, bubbling out through the back of the heart, chin into the chest. Again, inhale, slide those shoulders down the back body. Take the weight of the world off of them. It's not for you. Again, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, just neutralize. Walk your hands forward. Pull your body back up onto your hands and knees. Retuck the toes. Blossom into a down dog. Oh, yeah. Feel the backs of the knees open and expand. Sometimes it's nice to swish from side to side. Okay, inhale, sweep the right leg up towards the sky. Step it in between the hands. Angle the left heel onto the earth. So it's like the toes are at 10 o'clock as we sweep the left hand forward, upward, and backward. Bear up your in the two. So let's just kind of pulse into it today. Bend, straightening and bending. Mm -hmm. Experiencing sensation. Don't worry too much about the alignment right now. Just warming up. Do that inner growing as well on the quad. Now, pause. Palms face up towards the sky. Contract in between the shoulder blades. Pull the ribcage back in. That left thigh has an external rotation. Okay? Taking the right sit bone closer towards the right shoulder. Scoop it, scoop it, scoop it. And then push your right knee towards your pinky toe. And get really deep into the pose so I can put a hot cup of tea. Really, it's coffee on your quad. Sweep the left hand back. See if you can embrace where that cup of tea would be. Reach your right hand forward. Sweep it up towards the sky. And side bend. Either look down at your left foot or up at your right fingertips. Just continue to bend through that right knee. Staying with your breath. Go ahead and straighten out through that right leg. Right arm faces forward. We're going to reach our right fingertips forward, 
and flow into a bound trikonasana. So the left shoulder is rolling on top of the right, right quadricep is really engaged. You can feel it with your left fingertips, leaning back into it, staying with your breath. Release the left hand back up towards the sky. And then melt it to the back inside of the right foot. Pivot onto the ball of that left foot. Let's come down onto the left knee. Inhale, looking up through the heart. Exhale, straighten out through that right leg. Just starting to really adjust that right hamstring. Inhale, lift up through the heart. Exhale, pulse it back. Inhale, lift up through the heart. Exhale, pulse it back. Now bend through the right knee, pick left knee up off the earth. Make sure that you're plugging the right hip back, left hip forward, inhale, lift up through the heart, exhale, straighten out the right leg, chin comes onto the shin. Inhale, bend the right knee, sweep right hand forward, starward, backward, downward, exhale, straighten out the right leg. Bend right knee, left hand goes forward to the moon, back behind you, exhale, straighten it out. Two more times, let it feel good. Find the fullness of the breath, the fullness of the motion. And especially the fullness of the circle that we're creating right now, that left hand, and then exhale. Bend the right knee, lower down onto the left knee. Let's flow into Ardhahanavanasana, half splits. So let's try to get the right heel in alignment with our navel. Slide just the right stick bone back. Keep your right toes flexed towards your nose, and let's just embrace the outside edge of the right foot for now to really activate and draw our heart forward. And as we exhale, see if you can meander down onto that left forearm as the chin arrives onto your right shin. Think about progressively moving forward and not necessarily downward. Keep sliding the right stick on back, really activate through the right quadriceps. Take the right knee cap closer towards your pubic bone. Let's just breathe into this hamstring. <sighs> We're going to flow into Ardha Mukai Pada Pashimokunasa to straighten out through the arms. And then take the left foot off to the left just a little bit so you can come down onto the sit bones. See if the knees can draw together and you might need a little bit of a pop underneath the right hip if you're cascading off onto the right. Take your hands forward. Left toes are facing back and this is squishing together. Inhale, lift your heart. And today let's just exhale, see if we can embrace the sole of the right foot. As your nose grows closer towards your left knee, so you don't collapse off onto the right hand side. Some of you may need to push the right hand into the floor, like, like it's a kickstand, so you can really push into the outside finger of that left hip. Keep the right quadricep engaged. Feel the low back opens as well. Walk your hands up the length of your sticky mat to your hips. But from here, we're going to bend through the right knee. See if the right toe can come into alignment with the left knee. So we're opening up through the quadricep. Let's push forward a little bit in this space for me to recline. So feel free to sit on blocks as well. Fingertips are forward, hands are underneath the shoulders. So I really want you to stand on the right foot so that you can lift the hips up and scoop the pubic bone in towards the navel and whoo, lower the sits bones down. So it's like a circular motion again, forward, up, back, and down. Keep the left knee on the floor, forward, up, back, and down. Maybe you continue that progression, otherwise lower down onto your forearms. Same thing, stand on the right foot, scoop the pubic bone up, and you can really feel that left quadricep, right? And then try to root the left gluteal onto the floor before the right. Again, scoop up and down. Up. Okay. 
And then if you have even more space, go ahead, spin down onto the earth, sweeping the arms up overhead. Keep the left knee on the floor for sure. Keep standing on the right foot to push into that left hip. If you have even more space, you can beckon your right knee towards your right shoulder. Either interlace the fingers in front of the shin or behind the hamstring. Feeling the front body open up into that left hip flexor and with your breath. Taking your right knee closer, closer towards your right shoulder. And then deposit the right foot back down onto the floor. Crop yourself back up onto your forearms. Then extend your right leg forward. Walk your hands forward to frame your right foot. Take left knee up off the earth. Exhale, straighten out right knee. Bend right knee. And exhale. One more time, just like that. Bend right knee. And exhale. Let's take our hands off the inside of the right foot. You can either lower down onto the left knee, but I advise, no, let's just do it with the left knee up. Take the right hip back, left hip forward, but you listen to your body, come down onto your forearms. So now we're gonna get really active here. Take the right hip back, lift the left hip a little bit higher so you can around the left lower the heart, and then melt back into it. Stand firmly on the inside arch of that right foot. So up and down, up. Up and down. Lower that left knee back down onto the floor. So go ahead, walk the hands underneath the shoulders. Let's pivot the left heel behind our knee. Walk our hands to the left. Straighten out right leg, right toes in front of you. So now push the right sit bone down and then allow it to come back up. Down and up. Push it down, keep it down. Walk your hands off to your right foot. Left hand embraces outside perimeter of right ankle, shin, or quasi-step. Use the support of your right hand so that you slowly float the back of the left shoulder in the air onto the earth. Sweeping the right hand high towards the sky. Back in the right elbow to bend behind you to embrace the inside of that left hip flexor. Staying with your breath. Rolling the right shoulder on top of the left. Taking time to really breathe and open and expand. I just love this pose. Sweep the right hand back up towards the sky. Right hand underneath the shoulder. Unthread that left arm. Pivot your right foot forward. Left foot behind the left knee once again. Okay, Ardha Hanumanasana once again. Half split. So if you have blocks, I'm going to embrace my blocks. You take them to the highest level. And the hands are directly underneath your shoulders. So the right leg is straight, you can pick that left knee up and then draw the right sit bone back, push the left hip further forward. And now we just allow gravity to be our best friend. Taking us into the earth, grounding us. You can also opt to stay into your half switch if that's best for you. So regardless, the head is on top of the pubic bone for now. Left hip is pushing forward. Let's see if we can just forward fold here. Visualize that you're doing a handstand in your splits. So we're starting to get accurate self-assessment of how this is going to feel against the wall. Keep melting that left hip forward. Take the right hip back behind you. And then inhale, sweep the crown of the head up towards the sky. From here, untuck the left foot. Roll onto the right sit bone. Keep that left foot flexed. Remember, I'm not mirroring you, so I might look opposite. And then that left toe comes up towards the sky. Oh yeah, we feel all the attachments in your groin. From here, take the hands back behind you. Roll a little bit more onto the front of the pubic bone. Lift up through the heart. Maybe wiggle, jiggle from side to side. I like to wriggle a lot. Take the hands onto the inside of the thighs. So the thighs are rolling back. Pubic bone is on the earth. 
Kick the heels away. Toes flex towards your hips. So we feel the energy booming out of the legs and up and down through our spinal column, right? So it's kind of like that energy. If you can, take your hands forward without losing that neutral spine, keep the heart lifted. Maybe you squish from side to side, but your spine can be still nice and straight. Your way, you meander forward. Sometimes it's nice to scoop the heart a little bit to the front. You can feel how you roll up to the front of the pubic bone, and then exhale a little bit further forward. Take those thigh muscles away. Visualize I'm behind you, holding them back. Can't wait to the day we can do that. It's going to be so into adjustments. And then if you can, walk your hands as far forward as you can and become flat by the head. Keep plugging those six bones back. Breathe. Of course, if you would like to meander off to the right or to the left, go for it. Visualize the color red. That is the color of our root chakra, Muladhara. So this chakra is all about survival, trust, security, safety. So draw that color red up through the pubic bone as it Rose up to the crown of the head. Breathing in and breathing out. Let's straighten out through our arms. Go ahead, walk off to your right leg. Let's frame that right leg. Take the left hand onto the outside perimeter of the foot. Right hand roots into the floor so that we inhale, root down to that left sit bone. Exhale, to the onto the outside edge of the right. You can always release your hands onto your left right foot. Just keep pushing that left sit bone heavier into the floor. Moving a little slower today. We're going to roll off the hands forward. Enjoy your journey all the way off to the left. Oh, can you even frame your leg, right? So from here, take the right hand onto the outside edge of that left foot. Left hand is underneath the elbow. Inhale, exhale, put back behind you. Till your chin comes towards your knee. Again, right hip roots you into the floor. And then release, slap the hands back underneath the shoulders, sweep the crown of the head up towards the sky. Gather the heels in towards the midline, soles of the feet together, not too close towards your feet, you're going to just start to become a butterfly. Bouncing the knees, maybe a flubber breath out through the mouth if that was intense for you. <clears throat> Let's try to spread the legs wide open once again. Feel the hand close behind the heels. Fingertips back behind you. So all 10 toes off to the left. Right inside arch of the foot is on the floor. Straighten out through both legs. Pivot onto the heels. Let's go to the other side. Really straighten out through the legs. Pick that left hip up. Look over the left shoulder. Again, it should feel amazing inside arch of the foot onto the floor. Pick right hip up, look over right shoulder, good, and then on to the right. Good, and then neutralize. From here, hands are framing your right leg. You can always bring your hands onto blocks, okay, to help you. We're going to come back into our splits or into our half splits. So we frame the right foot, we point through the left toe, we pivot and draw our left hip forward, right hip back. Good. And then from here, slide back into the house foot. Back in that right foot, come onto the floor, right knee comes down. Pick that left knee up off the earth, and we're going to step that left foot closer towards the right for our slows and awesome. So again, you can embrace blocks, put the right hip back, left hip forward. Ready? Push it forward. Straight spine as we exhale, chin comes down onto the shin. 
Just taking time to really open up through our hamstring. If you have a little bit more space, that left hand reaches back to embrace the calf. Shoulders are framing the right shin, right hand comes around. Tuck the calf up towards the sky, pull the shoulders away from the ears as your chin comes down onto your shin. Maybe you look up at your big right toe. Hands back underneath the shoulders, bend through the right knee, step your left foot forward. Inhale, lift down halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Let's bend the knees. Roll up one vertebrae at a side. Chin into the chest. It's kind of like a rag doll. Draw the shoulders all the way up towards the ears and then slide them down your back body. Draw the shoulders all the way up to your earlobes like they're earrings. Squeeze your fists. Squeeze your eyelashes, squeeze your tush. Inhale, hold the breath. In, 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 let me see your belly balloon out. Inhale, 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 pull, 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 pull. Let it go. <sighs> Two more times. Inhale, draw the shoulders all the way up towards the ears. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Pull, 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 pull. Inhale, 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 let it go. <sighs> One more time. Nice peace. Inhale, squeeze. Squeeze everything, every hair follicle, let it go. Good. So now we're at the top of our mat once again, standing in Tadasana. Exhale, get rooted. Inhale, sweeping your heart, your head, your hands all the way back up. Exhale, pray it down and forward. Inhale, lift that halfway. Exhale, jump back to Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, on to a down dog. Stay with your breath. Inhale, elevate left leg up. Exhale, step left foot in between the hands. Cartwheel right heel onto the floor. Right toes are about two, 10 o'clock. Inhale, sweep the right hand forward, upward and backward. Rediscovering our bare Padrasana too. So once again, that right thigh rolls back. Get back in that left knee to bend. Think about both of the sit bones drawing towards the shoulders and push that left knee back. I personally like the palms facing the sky or contracting between the shoulder blade and then draw the rib cage back in. Bend through that left knee a little bit more. Same with your breath. Look over your left middle finger. Like you have a really tight onesie on. Zipper it up through the pubic bone to your head. Right hand floats back behind you, embracing that left hip flexor. Reach your left hand in front, the palm over the crown of the head, back behind you. I like to look sometimes down at my right foot, so I will watch the right thigh roll out. And really reach, reach, reach. Maybe you want to look up at your left fingertips. Stay with your breath. Straighten out through the left leg. Inhale, exhale. Let's flow down into the bound chakrasa. Rolling that right shoulder on top of the left. Roll the right hip back. Stay with your breath. Release the right hand. Spring my left foot. Put it onto the ball of the right foot. And then come down onto that right knee. Just pulsing back and forth. Once again, inhale, lifting up through the heart. Exhale, straighten out that knee. Three more times. Inhale, lift. Exhale, straighten out. Engage your left quadricep. Inhale, lift up through the heart. And then exhale, straighten out. Good. Now we pick right knee cap up off the earth. Into a high lunge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, straighten out. One more time like that. Inhale, keep pushing right foot forward. Left hip back. Exhale. Here we go. With the left arm. Watch your left hand go forward, forward, backward, downward. Exhale, straighten it out. Then left knee, right hand forward, upward, backward, downward. Exhale, straighten it out. Then left knee, left hand forward, up, back, down, exhale, straighten it out. Last time, 
So as you reach that right hand back, push the right hand forward. It wants to roll out and then exhale. Then through the left knee, deposit right knee back onto the floor. Arda Kondanasana, half split pose. So left leg is nice and straight. We take the left hip bone back, push the right hip forward. Again, you may opt to embrace the outside perimeter of that left foot. So really tuck it back, engage through the left body set, and see if you can come down onto that right forearm, or perhaps both forearms. You choose your variation. Holding our half splits a little longer than normal. Take the shoulders away from the ears. Close your eyes. Go inward. Feel the expansion happen first with the breath. And then allow the breath to infuse the muscles and the tissue. Keep the hips back right on top of that right knee. Slide in your heart a little bit further forward. Inhale, sweep the crown of the head up. Okay, point through the left foot. Walk your hands on the inside of that left foot as you take the right heel behind you and your hands in front. Left toes facing towards your head. Drop and melt the left pubic bone towards the earth and then straighten. Drop. And you really don't have to do anything. It just kind of reverbs up, right? That left hip. So push down, push down. From here, walk your hands off to your left foot. See if your right hand can embrace your ankle. And you glide that right shoulder right here down onto the floor, sweeping the left hand high towards the sky, pinching through that left elbow to embrace that right hip flexor. Really, really roll the left shoulder on top of the right, push, push, left the thumb down, pull leg through the tail, through the head as you inhale, and as you exhale, continue to spiral your heart towards the Release the left hand back up, deposit it underneath the shoulder, elevate the hand of the head back up. And then you point the left foot forward, sweep that right hand back. From here, walk the hands on the inside of that left foot, take the right knee half up off the earth, push your right foot forward, plug the left hip back, and see if you can lower it down onto your forearms. Take the shoulders away from the ears and just breathe. Take the left hip back, push the right hip up a little bit, pushing it to ball the right foot, and then melt. Activate, and then melt. Activate, and then melt. Activation, and melt. Two more. Lift. A little slight movement. And then the right knee comes down, straighten out through your arms. Arda Hanumanasana again, preparing for full splits. So the blocks are underneath the shoulders. Left leg is forward. Slide the left heel a little bit further forward. And just see if the height can come right on top of the leg. So from here, we pick that right knee pump up. We push the right hand forward. And move back a little bit more. And then allow gravity, gravity to take a step. One side is going to be a little bit more open than the other. Let's continue to encourage the opening to happen. Keep the hips square. And see if you can forward fold. Keeping the left foot flexed towards the nose. Remember, you can always stay in half splits if you prefer. Okay. 
walking the hands back underneath the shoulders. Untuck your right foot. Pell your right toes to the wall space in front of you. And then hook that right toe up towards the sky, rooting that right sit bone in better. So you're in a wide straddle here. Shake your hips, shimmy your torso. I'd like to open up through the heart chakra a little bit more. I visualize like I'm a spider. So I take out through my fingers and my heart comes forward. So the elbows are directly on top of your tiki out fingers. And you squeeze in between the back of the heart like you're holding on to that magic wand. Push the right shoulder down, left shoulder high, and just begin to alternate, feeling the sensation in the pectoral, uh -huh, in the anterior deltoid. Oh, it should feel good. You know, I'm a little tight there. And then we begin to shimmy. Push the shoulders, popping forward back. Forward back, forward back, forward back. Feel good. And then inhale, sweeping the head back up towards the sky. Okay. This time, try to embrace your big toes with your peace fingers and your thumbs. Spend four ways old. Maybe your hands are just here, but you're not landing to the back. You're still rolling onto the front of the pubic bone. You don't have to have a crazy wide strap. Release the hands underneath the shoulders, sweep the crown of the head back up towards the side. Good. Feel the hand behind the gluteal, cartwheel, which wagger the toes off to the left. Stand on your feet, push the hip forward, and extend your right arm back behind you. And then sweep back down onto the sink bones, off onto the other side, lift and lower. Again, lift and lower. Last one, lift. Okay, so now we're going to come back into the splits. So the right toes are going to point. We roll back forward into our split and then back into our half split, bend through that left knee. Pick the right knee up off the earth and step right foot slightly forward for parcel to last it up. So the left hip comes back, right hip forward. Inhale for as long as you can through the spine, and then exhale, allow your chin to come onto your shoulder. Again, take the left hip bone back even more. Engage through your quadricep muscle. Maybe the right hand comes back to embrace your right calf. Left hand sweeps back, framing that left shin with your shoulders. Tug your calf muscle up towards the sky. Chin comes down onto your left shoulder. Release the hands, micro bend through the left knee, step right foot forward. Inhale with the top leg, exhale forward fold. Left back, send the arms off to the side, Ooh, sweep them up towards the front, palms connect, exhale, go to travel down the center of your vessel. From here, let's just enjoy a gentle, subtle back bend. So your feet are hip width apart. Hands are onto the kidneys. Fingertips can face down or fingertips can face downward. So from here, visualize, and if you do happen to have a wall, the pubic bone can come onto the wall with the hip bones. Okay, and then we push our hips even further into the wall, but plug the thigh bones back. And then scoop the heart towards the side, push the hips, thigh bones back, maybe release your hands behind your feet. Walk your hands back onto your hips. Woo! Bring your hand head up towards the head and shake it out. Let's start to open up the shoulders. So come back to the top of your neck. Exhale, root down. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, play down and forward, reflecting on your intention. Inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, look back to a plank position. 
So utilizing your core once again, remember you can always come down onto the knees. Just don't break at the hip or bow down. So let's check. We can be as wide as your mat if you want. And so now we touch your left shoulder with the right hand and then opposite. Try not to sway the hips from side to side. So activating through our core. The core loves to get fired up. The more we use it, the stronger it becomes. Like in 10 minutes of just doing core, it gets more fiery. And we release from down onto the hands and knees. Eight points of contact. Inhale, Mujangasana. Exhale, wash your forehead to the earth. Slide your hands back about two inches, float your waist, push into your toes. Inhale, first into Mujangasana, and then into the up dog. We'll hop your hips a little bit for this work. Feel the belly open, hands and knees. Exhale, extended child pose. And inhale, draw yourself back up onto your hands and knees. Lower down onto your forearms. Elbows are directly underneath your shoulders. Interlace the fingers. Tuck your toes under. Lift the sits bones high towards the sky. Walk your feet as close to your elbows as you possibly can. Pull the shoulders away from the ears, and let's do some dolphin dog push-up. Chin comes forward, heart melts back. Ten more. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. And come down. Relax. Three healing breaths. Inhale, lift the head, pull your body back up onto your forearms, interlace the fingers once again. Step back to a dolphin plank, so the booty is shoulder head. We're going to propel the right hip on top of the left, so stack it, stab or stack your feet. So from here, zip up to the front body, lift your right hip as high as you can, contract your left oblique, and neutralize. So eight, seven, six, squeeze, three, two, both forms are on the floor, one, and off to the other side. Left hip back on top, stack your second feet, zip up through the front body, lift the left hip, and lower. And eight, seven, six, five, Forearms are on the floor. Three, two, and one. Roll onto the ball of your feet. And now we come into a sphinx position. So the hands are shoulder width apart. You can still see. Tug the elbows towards your waistline. And then the left ear washes towards the shoulder. Chin melts into the chest. Right ear. You can create half circles. You can create full circles. Maybe your jaw just wants to reach it towards the sky, or it might feel really good just to melt that chin into the jugular notch. Wash your forehead down onto the floor, hands back underneath the shoulders. Push yourself up into the plank and then a down dog. Holding your down dog. Inhale, fold back down onto your hands and knees. So from here, you're at the front of your mat, tucking your fingers under, thumbs are on top. You can kind of slightly walk your knees just a little bit behind the hips and then pipe the sits bones up towards the sky with your mountain peaks. Toes are tucked under so you have something to push into. So you push your arms forward. See if your heart can melt on towards the floor. Anahalasana. So we're going to find a range of motion in our shoulders 
As we stack, our shoulders on top of the elbows, and the duck into uh, sphinx position. Exhale, push the mat away. Scoop the sit bones bone towards the bottom of the The bubble, the back of the heart up, and the front of the heart up. Keep growing. Sweep the sit bones up, push your mat away. How are the shoulders feeling today? One more time, back. And one more time forward. Wash your forehead onto the floor, soften your facial muscles. Hands underneath the shoulders, push your body up onto your hands and knees. Sink the hips down onto the heels, knees are together though. Okay, no breather here. So just take your fingertips onto the shoulders, we're continuously lubricating them. And then the opposite direction, elbows forward, starboard, backward, and downward. <laughs> and then release. Take your hands forward once again. And from here, maybe just want to observe for a second. We've been working on this a lot in class. Not so much on online, but let's see what happens. So we're going to come into a down dog. We're going to come into a dolphin dog. Then we look forward. You might have to narrow your stance just a little bit. Remember, you're going to push your body forward with your core and your legs. The elbows are going to come up towards the sky. You're going to stamp on your hands into a chaturanga. So you don't strain the arms in. So chaturanga. Inhale, now straighten the arms up dog. Exhale, bear pose down dog. So let's try it again together. And we'll do it five times. We'll get the hang of it. So we're in a down dog, either simultaneously or individually lower down to your forearms. You can walk your feet a little bit closer. Look for it because that's where you're growing. Inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, bear pose down dog. Four more times. Lower down to the forearms. Inhale. Exhale. Chaturanga. Inhale. Up dog. Exhale. Bear pose. Down dog. Third time. Lower down. Look forward. Inhale. Exhale. Chaturanga. Inhale. Up dog. Exhale. Down dog. Two more times. Especially if you're going to eat any chocolate Easter bun. Look forward. Inhale. Exhale. Chaturanga. Inhale. Up dog. Exhale. Down dog. Last one. Do it for someone who can. Lower back. Look forward. Inhale. Exhale. Chaturanga. Inhale. Up dog. Exhale. Bear pose. Down dog. Rest in the child pose. Sweep your hands onto your lower lumbar. Interlace the fingers. Put the knuckles up towards the sky. Draw shoulders forward, uh, away from the ears. Knuckles forward. Maybe you want to sweep the arms in a circular direction. And then the other direction. Whew. Release the hands back down. Hands underneath the shoulders. Sweep the head up towards the sky. So let's move towards the wall. Let's start utilizing the wall here. Since we are utilizing the wall, I love this pose usually to fit more the gentle practice, but it's juicy and it's deep. If you happen to have your blocks, you're going to place them about a foot away from the wall. You're going to sit on your blocks, and the knees are up towards the sky. Knees are joined together. So just for a good gauge, remember I'm not mirroring you. The right hand form is in front of the shin. So if you're not popped up on blocks, it's going to be a little bit more challenging because you won't have so much of a neutral spine, which means that you won't be able to twist as far. But just for a good gauge, just put your left hand back behind you and make sure that that left elbow can come onto the floor. So this is what the profile would be like if there's a wall behind me. I sweep the hand directly behind my shoulder. The elbow is down towards the floor. So let's go ahead and arrive into that position. 
and you can customize it by uh, sliding away from the wall or amplifying it by taking the hips closer toward the wall. So the left elbow goes down, really take that right knee, right knee cap back, left knee forward. It's kind of like we're in Ukhutasana, a repeat Ukhutasana. If you have the space, the right elbow can come into the outside perimeter of the left IT bend. I keep plugging that right knee back with that right hip. Now inhale, exhale, push into the left hand as we push the heart, the navel of the heart begins towards the left. So as we inhale, we elongate. So tug that left hand down. Feel how your heart lifts. And then as you exhale, push into that right elbow. Again, tug the left hand down, lift up a little higher, exhale twist. Two more times, inhale. Roll onto the front of the feet, but well. exhale. One more time, inhale. And then exhale. Oh, and wind. Let's do the other side. So your knees and your feet are together. Just like our chair pose, we could talk about. So at first, maybe just reach the right hand up, creating as much space as you can through that right side body, and then slide that right hand down, right shoulder height. So once again, if you like you have a sticky or a, a gecko hand, and you tug down and lift the heart up, again, it's to reach down to rise up concept. Then if you have more space, that hand can reach up, and then that left elbow is the outside of the right IT band. Plug that left hip back. Inhale, pull as long as you can, tightening that right hand down. Exhale, push into that left elbow. Keep flowing like that. Inhale, climbing up the ladder of the vertebrae. Exhale, twisting. Again, inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. One more. Oh, and release. Draw the soles of the feet together. Easy breezy, just walk the hands forward and sweep from side to side. Maybe you walk forward, bowing your forehead closer towards your tippy toes. All right, and then draw the crown of the head back up to the back. So we're going to be alternating from handstand into uh, a forearm stand into future Mayurasana. So we'll start with handstands, and then our wrists might get a little tanky, and then we'll go to forearm, and then we'll come back to handstands. Okay. So you're by your wall, and we're going to face away from our wall. Your balls of your foot are right against the baseboards. The knees are underneath the hips and the hands are directly underneath the shoulders. Spread your fingers as wide as you can. It's a larger foundation than this. And then we kick the hips up and we look at the wall for a moment. We walk one foot onto the wall, only hip height, and then the other leg comes up as well. Draw your ribcage in. So if your feet are too high, there's no way you're going to be able to bone stack. So we want the hips directly on top of the shoulders, the shoulders on top of the wrist. Pull the rib cage in and sweep a leg up towards the side, looking in between the hands, pushing into the fingers, activate through your core. The right foot comes down, or whatever leg was lifted, and now the other one. You can even play around with the tippy toe onto the wall with whatever foot to get to the wall. Do it two more times. Keep the hips square. And then come on down. Child pose. Hands underneath the shoulders, sweep the head back up towards the sky. Draw your knees together, hands underneath the shoulders, tuck your toes, lift the knees, lift the hips, exhale. Inhale, flat back, root down to rise up, palms to your Exhale, come travel down the center of your vessel. So from here, let's just stand against the wall. The heels need to be against your baseboards or the wall if you don't have baseboards. Feet are together. The arms extend up towards the sky. So now we're assimilating a handstand. 
So from here, zipper up through the front body. Okay, try to get that lower back, this curvature eliminated. Push it, push it into the wall. Okay, really activating through that core again. It's all about core and just stacking the bones. So if you're a little booty-licious, this is hard. So I wouldn't be able to slide my hand right underneath behind your back. Okay? And then how about those shoulders? Can your hands be shoulder height? Some of us with some of us have a little bit of a limitation either structurally or muscularly, and we can just have active self-acceptance. So continue to squeeze, pull that navel towards the spine. Visualize them right next to you, checking out your alignment. Squeeze the inner thighs together, drop the tailbone down, good, and then exhale, we can stand the arms back out. Let's open up our shoulders a little bit more since we're already against the wall. Let's pivot to our right, so remember I'm opposite of the manual. And then the right hand comes up towards the sky, right hip is against the wall. Zipper up through the front body. You can never activate your core too much. And then the right hand starts to walk back. So you find your intelligent hands where are you feeling tight? It might be from um, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, somewhere in between there. And then you push your palm into the floor and then draw your right shoulder forward. You feel that tight flow open up. Activate through the core, we're still doing handstands. Even when we stand in line at the grocery store from the Tadasana, activating our core, activating our power. And then the right hand goes back up. Pivot your heart towards the wall. So you might have to listen to my verbal cues. So your hands are a little bit wider than your shoulders, if not just shoulder width. You walk your feet back about Oh, two and a half feet away from the wall. And you slide the heart down. You can jack the sits bones back behind you and melt the heart all the way onto the wall. If you could visualize, I'm placing a vase of flowers and putting them onto your low back. But this is what it looks like. Okay, so really get that heart off the wall. You can always spread your feet a little bit wider if you need to. And then you can now sweep the head back up towards the sky. Keep extending the left arm up towards the ceiling, and then we pivot in the opposite direction, bring the left hip onto your wall. Either your right arm can stay straight, you can sweep it back behind you, you can hold on to your hip. All right, here we go. Left arm walks back behind us, pushing that left shoulder forward. Just really taking time to open up to the pectoral. Now take the left shoulder and the left rib cage. Let's say to the right. Push into that left hand. Feel your lungs expand like luminous sails of light. Zipper up through the front body. And then walk that left hand back up towards the back. Reach your right hand back up to the sky. Pivot towards the wall once again, and then walk your feet back until your hands start to walk down the wall. So now you should be able to see me in between your legs. And the fingertips are against the wall, and we begin to walk our feet towards the wall until the back of the heart is against the wall. So you can either draw your feet together, okay, or keep them hip width apart, or you can spread them even wider. Just feel the support of the wall. Keep tilting the sits bones higher to the sky. Think about your sacrum, that triangular bone right above the tailbone, kissing the wall. You really slide down it. You're not going to fall through, I promise. Engage through your quadricep muscles. Okay, and then glue your feet into the floor, but try to find more of an external rotation. Rolling, rolling out, lifting up, and then draw your hands onto your wall. Think about the crown of the head touching the earth. And with your breath. <sighs> Getting a different perspective, right? Being upside down. And then slowly slide the hands back down underneath the shoulders. 
and then push into the palms, walk the hands back. Bend the knees and then slowly, slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Oh yeah, roll the shoulders forward up, back and down, and then exhale. Okay, you ready? So now we're going to do the standing splits against the wall. So you might want to watch my demonstration at first and then we'll revisit it. So we're going to come into a down dog. Our heels are against the baseboard or they are touching the wall. I'm going to extend my left leg up towards the side and drop that left hip. Walk your hands as close to your right foot in the wall as you can. So can you see how my left toes are tucked under? So this gives me something to drop the left hip into, right, uh, or push them into the toes. So the pubic bone is as close to the wall as possible. Then you sweep your right leg out and up. And then the left leg comes out and down. Left leg comes out and up. Right leg comes down. So let's try that together. Go ahead. Come into a down dog. Heels are popped up onto your baseboards if you have them. Let's extend the left leg up towards the sky. And drop that left hip. Tuck the left toes under. So even if your hands aren't that close to the wall, like mine are right now, I can still push into that left foot and find a nice range of motion through my right leg. And then my left. But keep going. What does need to happen are the shoulders need to be on top of the wrists. So they're pillars. Eventually, once the pubic bone connects to the wall, the legs and the hips will be right on top of the wrists and the shoulders as well. So try that a few more times. I'll do it with you. Let's do it one more time. Let's start with the other leg. Up. Tuck the toes under. Drop that hip. Walk your hands as close to the wall as you feel appropriate. And then sweep the left leg out and up. Right leg out and down. Right leg up, left leg down. Good, from here, hold it here and try to touch your left wrist with your left toe for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, sweep it up. Last one. Right leg comes down. Try to touch your wrist. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Right foot comes down. Left foot comes down. We rest. Slide the hands underneath your shoulders, sweep the head back up. Walk your hands forward onto your hands and knees. We're going to point our fingertips towards our knees, placing the back of the hands onto the floor and try to straighten out through the arms. Releasing in tightness. Draw the hips back down onto the heels, shake it out. So now we'll have a little bit of fun just on our forearms to give our wrist, a, our, our, wrist, our wrist a little bit of a break. That's a wrist break hybrid board. So the balls of our feet are against the wall. And then we come down onto our forearms. And then we measure our elbows with our wrists. We spread our hands as wide as our elbows and our shoulders. And remember, you're gonna stand on your forearms, squeezing them in towards the midline. So I already feel it in my pectorals as I do that. But the shoulders are going to draw away from the ears. So from here, elbows are underneath armpits. Walk one foot at a time onto the wall, right above the hips. Look forward, pull the rib cage in. 
Okay, really activate through the core, lift one leg up, and then the other leg up. You can hold it here. Maybe you kind of just kind of tap off of the right foot. Maybe the opposite foot. And then come on down. How did that feel? Right. So now let's do that against the wall. Now your neck, you're not going to fall through your wall. So we come closer, about six inches away from the wall. Again, we measure our elbows with our wrists, not our fingertips. And then the fingertips come forward, shoulder width apart. We erect our hips up towards the sky. We look for, we pull the shoulders away from the ears, and then we jump up. So what can happen? That leg is up towards the sky. You need to activate your core. Look forward because that's where you're moving, right knee or left knee bends, and you can kind of hop like a bunny until you come all the way up. Now pull the rib cage in, bend one knee. Okay, so one foot's against the wall, the other leg is straight up towards the sky, knees are together. And then see if you can play around with straightening up through the legs. And then come down when you're ready. And rest. Take the hands onto the low back, interlace the fingers, hook the knuckles up towards the sky. Hands come back down. So now let's try to go up into a handstand against the wall. Unless you prefer, you can come down onto your forearms again if your wrists are being cranky. Otherwise, your hands six inches away from the wall. I like a firm foundation without my mat because it can irritate the curls if you're on a squishy uh, surface. So the hands are shoulder width apart. You come into the down dog again. Oh, I'm only about, oh, four inches away from the wall. So I lift forward, I lift one leg as high as I can, I bend my other knee, inhale, exhale, and I float up. Okay. Zip rope through the front body. Remember the exercise that we did, say with your breath, and then squeeze the knees together and try to find your handstand. Good, hold it as long as you can. Push away the earth, use your little fingertips, uh, to push it into the floor to find and stabilize and find your balance. Just gonna check you out. There you go. Good job. Hold it as long as you feel appropriate. You can have a lot of fun in your handstand too. If you'd like, you can draw the soles of the feet together into Vatakanasana. Okay, push your pelvis in front of you, slay the knees to the wall behind you, look up between your thumbs, and try to levitate. You can just use your tippy toes to pop yourself whoo, off of the wall. Stay with your breath. And then let's all come down and rest in a child pose. Oh, inhale, sweep the head back up towards the sky. Just kind of slide off onto one side. Good. Coming to the top of our mat with our tippy toes as we roll down one vertebrae at a time. The earth feels really good. Draw the knees close to the heart. Send the arms out. This is our final spinal twist. I'm guiding you through a really soft one. If you prefer to amplify it, go for it. Right hand onto the left knee as our knees float off to the right, and we get to look off to the left. Roll into the back of the left shoulder. Back into the left rib cage, into the left ear. If you prefer, you can create a Kalyasana arm, the left arm, meaning you just bend the elbow or extend the arm back behind you. Draw the knees back up towards the sky. Oh, shift your hips off to the right about two inches. Knees are close to the heart, left hand embraces the right knee as it passes. 
kids and descends down. And we look over our right shoulder. We feel any residual tension releasing right now forever. Mentally, physically, emotionally, especially in the low back. <laughs> Inhale, gaze skyward, roll back onto your back. Maybe you spiral the knees around, up and asana, or just circles. And eventually we'll flow right into savasana, extending our legs nice and long. Spread your feet wide, squeeze your tush and let it go. Lift the heart, slide it down the back as the palms face skyward. Please take a nice deep breath in and exhale. Become absolutely still. Just let the body melt open. And as you close your eyes, Imagine that you're closing the door on the world around you. Breathing naturally as you allow the sounds of your busy life to fade. Let your spontaneous breath be the sound that carries you further and further away from the concerns of your life. The responsibilities and the challenges you face will all wait as you take this moment for yourself. Witnessing as you breathe in, how your lungs fill up completely. And as you breathe out, letting go attention. As we inhale, breathing in fresh new energy. And breathe out worry. If thoughts arise, you may gently lead your mind back to the deep flows of relaxation contained in each and every breath. As you seek into your inner self, you may find and discover a place that you've often wished to explore. The early morning sun glitters around you, warming your shoulders as you walk. The path you follow is old and well-worn. You may hear the rustle of leaves or the smell of fragrant air as you breathe in. You have all the time in the world. The path is leading you to a private place that is quiet and protected. Lay down in the soft green grass and stretch your body into the peacefulness all around you. The warm golden sunlight fills you with a delicious warmth that seems to increase with every breath you take. You can rest, you can relax. If you notice that you're still carrying the weight of concerns and responsibilities, even in this lovely retreat, it is time in these few moments to find a place to set all those cares aside. This is your time to nurture yourself without distraction. You might want to imagine a large and ancient chest made of gold. This chest has the power to transform whatever is placed inside of it. Your worries and problems long to enter the chest, for it is the place where they too can rest and resolve. So take a moment and observe all the people, the problems, and the situations in your life that cause stress. Then place them one by one into the chest. You can let these distractions go. And when you're ready and you're done, 
take a deep breath and close the lid. You can leave these responsibilities far behind. Rest in the feeling that you are completely free. Imagine with each breath, your lungs are filling with light. Your lungs are absorbing the light and transforming into luminous sails. You can choose to lie in Savasana as long as you'd like today. Otherwise, allow that healing breath to start to reawaken your amazing bodies. Wiggling through your toes, through your fingers, swallowing your saliva, getting excited about all the magic that's going to happen today. Just because we're in quarantine, our seconds are encouraged to stay home doesn't mean that there's magic. So we come back and we root our feet into the floor. We draw upon that earthy sensation. And then we sweetly roll off onto our right hand side into a fetal position. Feeling good. But in order to feel good, you must allow yourself to feel. So we observe how we feel, we witness it, we don't suppress anything, the good or the not so good. But then we allow ourselves to feel good. Coming back up into a comfortable seat, sitting with lots of integrity, Lots of intention, keeping the spine long, the shoulders falling away from the ears. The jaw is still soft. We gaze inward. In deep gratitude for everything that we have, our hands come back together into a prayer. You know, I'm so grateful for this practice, for my friends, for my family, for my home. And let's conclude this practice with one sound of om. So please exhale. Inhale. Om. I honor the place in you which the entire universe dwells. I honor the place in you, which is love, of peace, of light, and truth. When you are in that place in you, and I am in that place in me, we are one. Namaste. Hold on, I'll unmute you.